Hello, welcome to Retrotainment. Joined here by my co-host, Capital C, Capital O. Greg, how are you doing, buddy? What's happening, homie? Ah, not much, not much. We're just going to do our wrap-up show for the year, which is going to uh, look back at our last of all the shows we recorded for this year. And we're going to pick each our top five uh, films. So it's not the it's not the actual top five shows because that take that's too difficult to actually do. But the films that were chosen for the shows, that's what we're going to choose here. Um, this just, is going to be just, our just, just something different for uh, the the new year. Yeah, just a, a good way to start us into the new year. Um, this is going to be our last show on the Dynamo Podcast Network. We are going to split off and create our own. YouTube channel and our own anchor and things like that. So uh, the links to them will be in the description of the video. So uh, anyone that's been a fan over the years or is be becomes a fan, uh, please follow us over there. Uh, like us, share, um, subscribe, all of that stuff. Uh, the Facebook and Twitter will be remaining the same as usual. Same with the Instagram. But uh, it'll be a new YouTube from now on, uh, which all the boys are doing. The upper tier have moved off to their own one. On the slab will be moving off to their own one as well. Uh, King Rose Court will be moving off to its own one. Dynamos doesn't. They'll all be splitting off. Uh, so Retrotainment and Retrotainment Recast will be splitting off into our own one. And the link for that will be in the it'll description be, it'll, below. It'll just, be, it'll just be the one page for Retrotainment and Recast. Yeah, it's been a great it's been a great year with the Dynamo Podcast Network. But uh, we just felt that it was time for us all to just make our own thing. We're all still completely involved with each other. There's been no fallout, no arguments or anything like that. It's just, this was a decision that we all came to that we felt it's time to just make our own channels and see how we can do from there. But, um, so leave on a happy, we all leave on a happy note, but uh, we'll get into this, Greg. So we'll let you go with your first one since you're the capital C, capital O co-host. Wait, so that's not fair now. You're the host. You go first. <laughs> well, see, host. Let's you know, co-host gets first. Polite, that's that's how you get in. Yeah, you know, good guy Ted here. Have um, a reputation to uphold. Yeah, whenever we get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, one that we done not so long ago there for um the Robin Williams month. I'm gonna go with Hook. Yeah, how it's could you not? Classic, isn't it? The, the single best Peter Pan version or version of Peter Pan there is. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a like. One Robin Williams is just, it's one of his, I don't know if it's even one of his, it's probably not one of his better roles, but it's such an enjoyable film. Like, I think for me, that's like people that say Jumanji, Mrs. Doubtfire, that for me is the one that I can go back and just watch over and over and over again. Yeah, 100%. Like, don't get me wrong, for me. I can watch Jumanji as well, but I'll watch Hook quicker than I'd watch Jumanji. Yeah, if I, if I had to pick one to watch, if someone's like, you have to watch one now and you can't watch the other one, I'd be like, I'd just put Hook on then. Yeah, thanks. It's like two and a half hours or whatever it is and it flies by yeah um dustin no hoffman. other yeah other it's himself and dustin hoffman really outside of that uh, uh, bob, bob hoskins julia roberts yeah they're like they're, they're not the this names, they're not the stars though that hoffman and uh no no, no Ro Jesus, uh yeah. williams were at this point like they you know they were the star power and they killed it yeah spielberg's genius as well yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant selection. It would have been on my list, but except, for, <laughs> except for the fact that, yes, we agreed. Uh, we each make sure that we didn't have the same one on the list because it would be a bit of a well, shit well, video if we decided to uh, There's no point do in, uh, in doing five each or whatever and you having the same fives I have, or at least three of them. Probably yeah, the I, th I, I think a lot of them would be quite similar. Um, yeah. I went with one that could flip-flop day-to-day, as I said when we recorded them. Uh so I went with Terminator 2, but if I was asked tomorrow, it could be Terminator. Do you know that way? Um, big, big choice. This is this is the same. We said it on the show. This is the same as Alien and Aliens. Yeah. You can easily pick one between the other. Like um, Terminator 1 is more the horror side of it. Terminator 2 is arguably probably the best sci-fi movie ever made. Yeah, and I think, you know, Terminator has to build its own franchise, whereas Terminator 2 gets to piggyback off the already successful Terminator film yeah. um, but I just I think for me Terminator 2 it's just you know because they already had that success they had the, a little bit more money to play with they had a bit more confidence when they were built like going into it I think I think we said on the, on that episode this was the biggest budget of a movie at one stage uh, one of the stages yeah would have been and I think it just because of that 
and like them being confident in how the Terminator should act and the, the fact that it's, you know, such a massive twist that Arnie comes back again as the Terminator, true. but this time he's, a good he's the good guy because he was so popular as Terminator in the original that they were like, we can't use him as the bad guy again. Like people but, aren't going to buy it. Like I feel sorry in the first one, like everyone remembers Arnie and, and, um, and Sarah Connor, obviously, from the first one. But Michael Bain should have got a lot of love for that. He was good in the first one. Like He was, yeah. But I think Arnie was just such a, you know... It was polarising, really. Yeah, like, it was hard not to love him. You know, this big walking, you know, not even, like, walking, not talking machine that just gunned down anyone. You just kind of... You should hate him, but you just couldn't. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. But uh, the humour, even in the second one, was... Yeah, letting so him good. letting him talk that little bit more, and you yeah. know he does have a few lines in the first one, but letting him talk that little bit more and fleshing him out a bit, yeah, um, sarcasm yeah. and everything. Yeah, like him trying to learn how to interact with humans. It's just so good. Um, you know, I feel so, the franchise the franchise kind of collapsed after this. I think three was okay, um, and then they kind of just went a bit wayward after that. It went a bit, you know, we're living off our um, off our success after that, but. Terminator 1 and 2, 100%. I could flip-flop on either of them. Yeah. But for today, I'm going to go with Terminator 2. Yeah, my horror background will tell me to go 1. Yeah, and you know, as, as we said at the time, I couldn't argue with you. No, you know, like no you're wrong. You, if someone says to you 1 or 2, whichever. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy to watch either one, really, lads. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't know. It's, it's a fucking phenomenal film. And he was at the height of his powers as well. Yeah, uh, and this only this only chasmed him into sp- stardom even more. Like, oh yeah, he just he just went from strength to strength from there. Yeah, from the early eighties up, he was just early eighties to late nineties, maybe maybe even two thousand. I think even now, like you you stick him in something now and have him in that sort of role, and he's like people will still flock to see him. Oh yeah, like look at him in the Expendables and things. Yeah, like it's still That's now it's now for him a name because he yeah. doesn't like all right whatever he had the body and things at that stage do you know what I mean people yeah. went like women went to see that more so than the movie I'd say and maybe even some men whatever you're into yeah but no yeah it, you know the men went because you know it was this Pure massive action. action film and women went to see him like or, I mean you know. James James Cameron done a hell of a job with these yeah no, two two classic yeah. classic films what have you got for your second on your list there go on ah uh, sure it's an old favourite of mine uh, it was the first episode that I appeared on. Oh yes, I know the it. Hurricane. Yes, I hadn't seen it before. Uh, you'd come on and told me what to a, give that a pick. watch. Yeah, great pick. I really it, enjoyed it. NSL is fucking phenomenal. He should have won an Oscar for this. Yeah, I I can't believe he didn't. I uh, I can't remember what beat him at this minute in time, but something big bet him. Yeah, he deserved one though. Like this was like it's a very different role to a lot of what Denzel would have been doing. The action, yeah. Yeah, and it's just. It's quality, like yeah, it was it was so well put together, and the story you now obviously some of it's fleshed out, and yeah, it's you know Hollywood. But, uh, the book, like the, how he finds the book to the story to getting him out of prison. Yeah, and, and I, I, I've I actually, love. I've actually read kid. that book now. Yeah, um, I love that the kid is you know like I love the story of like you have kind of two stories in it because you have Denzel's story itself where you're lear- hearing about his boxing career and how he got you know shafted and shafted and stuff and then you've got the story of the child who you know gets adopted um out of this kind of it's bad... a very strange adoption that one because he's well into his teens yeah like he can't read or write like he can't read yeah. or write but like they can tell that he's got an intelligence there yeah. so they take him in and then he moves forward with his other family learns to read he finds someone that you know he yeah. ide- like he eventually just finds that book and that drives him to being a lawyer and then throughout the rest of his life, you know, the two of them are intertwined together and yeah. he eventually gets them all. It's just, it's, it's a great, great story. And then obviously the the film is fleshed out and, you know, more is made of certain things than isn't, but. Yeah. Um, but like that DVD was so hard to come by. One of the lads had to pick it up for me when he was in Galway a number yeah. of years ago. So good. Like it's, it's actually currently upstairs in my DVD player. Yeah, oh, I know. watched it, was, it again the other night. It was brilliant. Like it, that was one I hadn't seen before, as I said at the time, and it's definitely one that I will go back and rewatch. Now it is. It's a hard kind watch. of. It's a, it, It's not one of the harder watches I've ever seen, but it is t- 
tough and it's long. Yeah, in, it's two and a half hour long. But it's a, it feels two and a half hours, you know, because it's not really easy, you know, it's like tense as well. Yeah. yeah, the whole time you're like, Jesus, the injustice of this whole shit, like, and you know, like that's what it was. And you know, there's loads of things, like there's loads of films I'll watch that are like that, but yeah. I wouldn't rewatch them a hundred times. I'd rewatch them, you know, every couple of years maybe. Like there's the, the the one movie that I've watched twice and I'll never rewatch is Schindler's List, probably. I think I've watched that once. I don't think I've put it on again. That's um, the single roughest watch that I've had. Yeah, Prisoners is one for me that very long, three three and a bit hours. Um, yeah. very tough watch. Very like brilliant film, but yeah. uh, it's just not one I I'd, I'd stick on again yeah. too quickly. Yeah, this one though, I've I've watched this probably two three hundred times. Oh yeah, I definitely I, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near that on this one, but uh, I'll definitely probably I won't rewatch it again. This year, I wouldn't say, but like... I know, so we only done it back in, what, March or February or March? Yeah, it would have been uh, January, I think, in and around that we did this one, but... Um, Episode six, was it? Something like that, yeah. It was uh, It was very early on, so like, it is one that I will, will re-watch, but yeah. it definitely won't be, uh, you know, top of my list for re-watches like Hook. Oh, yeah, would. but as I said, it's not, a, it's not as easy a watch as, as say, Hook. Yeah, exactly. Now, I, wouldn't, I don't think there's too much in the difference in time, but it's it's... Hook's more enjoyable watch. Yeah, you know, you, you can sit down and watch Hook and, you know, you can miss 10 minutes of it and it's kind of all right. Whereas this, it's a bit like, oh, I don't want to miss any of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, two uh, two very contrasting films with two very, uh, two very solid ones. Yeah, two hitters. <laughs> yeah. I will, I'll be sticking with kind of action packed here. Um, and it's one that we did not too long ago when we were doing our um, kind of action films. I went with uh, Kill Bill. Um, How could you not love Kill Bill? Now, obviously, I know some people aren't Tarantino guys, and they just don't like any of his films, which I guess, if you're not into his style, you're not into it. If you don't like that kind of film, don't watch it. Simple as that, because you're going to fucking hate it. Yeah, and like I get that. You know, some people just don't like that style, and that's perfectly fine. But Kill Bill, for me, uh, I'm cheating a little bit here because we only covered volume one, but both of them, like the the, the selection uh, of Kill Bill one and two together, it's just so good for me. How, how strange was it though, when we knew that that was coming out, that he was going to do a back-to-back film? Oh yeah. It, for it, him, it just doesn't exist. Like, yeah, he normally, it's a one and done, but then you find out at the end of the film, oh, this is... So there's a second bit to this. There's another bit to this. Uh, this was one of the few where he said, yeah, I have... A two-parter here. This is the only one. Yeah, like this, but he came out and he said it. He was like, I've got a two-parter here. Um, And just, you know, the way he went about it, you know, the first the first film is uh, her knocking off two of the enemies. Yeah. Uh, which I like because, you know, the start of the first film, um, you know. She gets all sorts of fucked up. Yeah, she gets all sorts of fucked up, but like it starts with her marking Black Bomba off her list. Yeah. Then it jumps all the way back to, right, why is this a thing? And then you build from there, get to her killing Black Mamba, and then you get to move on from there to... Oh, she ran. To, uh, to Oren, yeah. It's Oren. Just, Oren Ishii, yeah. It's just it's so, so good. Um, yeah, like, soundtrack like, for it is great as well. Yeah, Vivica, Vivica Fox and... Um, Lucy Liu. Yeah. yeah, this is the height of Lucy Liu here as well. Yeah, um, like they were phenomenal to get in. Yeah. Um, like the cast of this, Uma Thurman obviously is uh, a Quentin Tarantino girl. Yeah. Um, Michael Madsen, who you see for about 15 seconds in this movie. Yeah, he's not in this one much, but he is in the second one. Um, obviously, uh, he departed this year as well, but um, he's, you know, the sword maker. Yeah, uh, his name evades me at this minute in time. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, I know I know who you're talking about. Uh, but like he he was a big name at that time. Uh, Hattori Hanzo is what yeah, he's called plays, yeah. in the film. But uh, you know, I just yeah, he, uh, passed, he passed away. And actually, I was just before we done this. That's why we done Kill Bill. We brought Kill Bill in. Yeah, because of uh, because yeah, we I don't think we originally had that on the list for that month. No, and then we correctly. Yeah, then we changed, and obviously we had Carl Sherlock on for that one as well. Um, shout, out, shout out to Carl Sherlock. Yeah, actor was uh, Sonny Chiba. That's who That's it is. One, yeah, yeah, but yeah, just 
oh, the film is just so 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 good. Um, the I scenes guess. in it as well. You know, like the it goes black and white when she's killing all the crazy eighty eights. Then it goes back to full color, and she's poor, in the poor um, old Sophie. She's in the Bruce Lee um yeah. suit sort of. Uh, and then poor old, poor old Sophie getting her arm chopped off. Yeah, well, you know, she shouldn't have. You know, she shouldn't have been. I mean, like, it's, it's the most out there of Tarantino's movies. It's very out there, but, like, I remember I remember when this was released and it was a huge deal. Do you um, remember, do you remember the, the controversy he caused when he put up the big banner on Hollywood the Boulevard? Big bloody, the big bloody <laughs> sword. Uh, practice convertible right underneath it. Yeah, that, it gets me every time. But, yeah, um, that's, that's my one. Cheating a little bit there because, obviously, there's a volume two to that that we haven't covered, but... Yeah, we'll get there, and the two of them together are just phenomenal yeah. on their own. They're great as well, but you know, it's a it's the one, a double. The one thing I love about this now, I know um, we haven't actually got to Pulp Fiction on Retro Time yet, but this the fact that he planted the seed for this in, in Pulp Fiction, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it's phenomenal. Like if you hadn't seen Pulp Fiction, it is, and you watch Pulp Fiction and then watch this, you're like, oh my god! But it's so subtle as well that if he hadn't it's, done yeah. something with it, you know. It'd just be a part in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah it's great. Absolutely brilliant. Well, we'll move swiftly on. Um, I will run into a horror background here. Yeah, of course. My, I'll go to my favourite horror movie and I, it'll make a list every time. Yeah. 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> um, no, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, a, a classic. Yeah, it's it's. I didn't even bother thinking of putting this on my list. I seen it and I said... Not even that's gonna bother. Gonna <laughs> that's already gonna be in. Not gonna bother. Um, and, and I said that to you before. I was like, yeah. there's a couple of horror films. Like when we covered them, um, obviously we did a uh, House on Haunted Hill with Aaron. Um, yeah. and then shout out Aaron from First yeah, Heart. Then we each picked one, and you pick. You obviously picked Nightmare. I picked fourteen oh eight, which was another spo- show. Spoiler doesn't make our doesn't make the list here. But honorable it's, mention though. Yeah, it's a very big honorable mention because it. In terms of horror films, it is one of my top ones that doesn't get a lot of love because it's not a franchise. Yeah. But like but, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is arguably poor. Yeah, I think so. I've, I think, said, I've said that even on the slab, I'd say it's, it's arguably poor. I think um, as a franchise, it's quite poor, but as a standalone one, film. One, one, three, and four are the good ones and A New Nightmare. Yeah. Um, I said that on an episode there with Mikey. Um, yeah, on the on the slab. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But um, yeah, one had to build the franchise, and, and what a way to build it! Like to think about it now, when you look back, that Robert Englund wasn't originally cast. Can't see anybody else doing it now, can you? Well, the, there was a guy that actually had seen uh, filmed the opening twenty minutes or something, and then pulled out. Yeah, but like you can't yeah. even like you can't even imagine somebody it not no. being him now at this point, you know. But, he, I think, saved slasher movies in a way. Um, changed. Said it, yeah, he changed the game. He brought it in. He brought the humor in. Like, in, that was when he'd done that. They brought it in that he went into the likes of Hot Topic with clothes. And, yeah, he was, it was a big game changer and, like, obviously changed it from the, the likes of and... Michael Myers and stuff where they, you know, walked down their victims. This was very different. He was, he did hunt. Like, he, it wasn't like he just jumped out. Yeah, like he predatorily stalked. Like he did stalk, but like he'd let them get away, but then he'd show up behind him. And obviously he has mystical powers where he can, you know, teleport and you know, it's in someone's dreams. So but like, can he, do, like they, I, they, I think they've done a very good job in the franchise of doing that, that you can kind of do anything. They didn't do, go too much into it in the first one, but you can kind of do most things in a dream. Yeah, exactly. And even when he's outside of the dream, he can still do things like that, you know? Yeah. Because he's a mystical, strong, yeah. Yeah, he's a mystical being. Do you know what I mean? Um, I we, we got the great Johnny Depp coming out of this as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. in this, he's not great. If this was what you were going to base his film career oh, no. on, you'd be like, Jesus, he's not going to be but a to success. Get, to get but into this, uh, like he, his death scene, though, that's iconic in, yeah. in terms of horror. You, if you go into even YouTube and put in iconic horror deaths, that's going to be in it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, even the way the mother dies in this one. You know, like it's it's nowhere near tell, as iconic. You can tell but, it's a balloon. Yeah, but like it's nowhere near as iconic. But like the you know, pull through the door. Yeah, she just kind of like fades down through the. 
Oh, the bed. The, the bed, uh, yeah. and she just disappears, and then obviously like going up the stairs where, you know, it, it, people say it's very noticeable now. You know, when you when she's uh, when she's running up the stairs, you can and see the holes. You can see the hole. It's noticeable now because we have 4K televisions and they've been remastered to 4K. When you're watching that back in the 80s on some shitbox telly, not a chance you were ever going to notice that. I said on that episode on, on the slab to, to Mikey, I said, uh, how many times do you reckon she ran up that first one and missed the second hole? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, like, Loads of you'd times. Have to, you'd have to take all that goo off and go again. Go again and again and again. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it was a tough day at the office film and that one. Yeah, but um, like some of the special effects that Wes Craven brought into this was phenomenal. Yeah, and um, see, that's the thing. They, there's, they, they are special effects, but they're they're not CGI because obviously that wasn't a thing then. You know, like it was like we have to make this stair that her foot can sink into. Um, and then like when you see Freddy coming out of the bed and the sheet starts to stick to him because obviously he was just on fire. Yeah, and then like... It's the know. little things they do in it. Um, and then obviously they had the great John Saxon as well. Yeah, he's. I think he, he the at the time. I think at the net time, like he's the name, you know. Yeah. Um. And even now, like I know, as a horror fan, you know, you know who plays Freddy, but yeah. I think a lot of people don't even un- like they don't think about who plays Freddy. It could be a different person every time, as far as they're concerned, because Freddy is the attraction now, rather than you know any individual actor. Unfortunately, the franchise is at this minute in time dead and buried. Yeah, well, I've given my idea. Someone should take me up on it. it yeah. I, think into, I think it's a very good idea. Put him into a VR game. There's your new film. We've, like, already, we've already seen him, obviously, make an appearance in Ready Player One. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. VR, a lot of kids put on a VR headset. One of them dies in it. And that's the story from there. Like, like it's, it's, the, it's the exact same as a dream. Like, you could nearly do the original film to an extent. It's kind of using that new you know, Jumanji way of doing it. Isn't yeah, it? like you use five kids, you know, four or five kids, whatever way you want to do it, you use them, and it's just a VR headset. And you know, one of them's like eventually realizes, like, oh, we've got to go in the VR to drag them out. Like, it, you can still do all of that, or you know, we we need to beat them in VR, and like you can do that. I I think that's that's the way. If they if they ever want to reboot this franchise, and you know give a few a few more films to it that's that's the way they go dreams forget about doing it in dreams anymore now is the time to go VR yeah I, I'd watch it honestly but uh, for me I'd only watch three or four of them unless I'm really invested in going through the franchise again because some of them are absolute trash yeah and see that's the thing like some of them aren't great some of them are quite poor but you know you've they're the ones you put your hat on so you, well, there's not much you can do about it at that point I mean like this this is the movie I, I said it all the time this is the movie that uh, I have that started me on horror yeah exactly I snuck down the stairs <laughs> when you were told not to but, <laughs> best believe uh, I'm going down that stairs well you can't tell a kid not to do something because it's the first thing they'll do they get it I mean, when they get I a was chance given, I was given two movies never to watch this was one of them and The Exorcist was the other yeah well I, The Exorcist I watched both. The Exorcist is the first, the original one's okay. The rest yeah. of them are all I've pretty much seen, the same. Never seen the rest. Of them. I've seen but, uh, Exorcist of Emily Rose and stuff, and they're not bad. Oh no, it's they're just... they're different though. That's nothing to do with the actual Exorcist franchise. No, but do you know what I mean? Like it, exorcisms, there's only so much you can do because it's oh, kind yeah. of the same story. So once you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all, um, which is kind of I the problem mean, with them. Yeah. Uh, I will stick with kind of action, but it's a sort of superhero-y action one here, which you know. Um, if I'd let you just do any old films yours would have been mainly horror uh, this is kind of what happens with me is I'm kind of more uh, comedy and action films I do love horror and drama and stuff like that but I find that these seem to be the ones I fall into but uh, this is one that I've rewatched yeah, I know recently <laughs> with you and it's you know I'd kind of forgotten how much I loved it um, but The Crow just yeah, oh yeah. I only rewatched it obviously with uh with, common... Yeah, with, with this set like with when we recorded that you rewatch it and it's just it's such a good film like. Yeah. Um, um it's it's a real shame that Brandon Lee obviously died on, on set. Yeah, there, there's um, a couple of other crow films after this. Um, yeah, which was Reven- always going to be the, is it, or there's, there's I think there's three or four of them and the, you know the idea was that obviously he was going to be the crow in all of them. Yeah. Um, but obviously, 
because he died on set, um, which is something very similar happened recently as well, obviously with uh, Alec Baldwin. It's, in, it's fucking insane. Mental, how is it? It's happened more than a couple of times, though. Yeah, I just unfortunately it, yeah. in The Crow, it was, you know, the, the main actor who was actually the one who yeah. passed away from it. Like, it's sad that anyone passed away from it, but yeah. obviously it, this was a bit more notable in yeah. the paper because of who like who died rather like you know and obviously obviously being bruce lee's son as well uh, same age as bruce lee and everything like it was crazy just crazy crazy stuff but the like, film there was, talks, there was talks that they were going to scrap this movie i know it was near the end oh yeah it was right like there, there's a few scenes in this where they um he actually kind of doesn't shoot in, yeah. yeah they just double him in from other stuff but uh oh, it's just it's so good like the whole the concept of you know he died a year ago he comes back to avenge you know the people who killed him, and you know he's super like he's supernatural. Like, but I he mean, doesn't. I, I he doesn't forgot, even. I completely forgot how dark some of the parts in this film were. Like, yeah, there's, like there's, there's there's that whole scene with the girlfriend in the room and the thing. With oh, the thing like with and like not even hot, not even kindly, not even kind of like you know, not just hinted at, like very much like oh yeah, no, that happened. yeah yeah oh yeah, like we're raping her. Like you you, yeah. you know that that's what's happening in a scene, and then. You know, like, as much horror as I watch now, them kind of scenes just kind of—I know oh, they all, most people yeah. are just kind of like, oh, you don't really need it. But no, you don't. But it does like it emphasizes. I think in some films, it's like, yeah, you really didn't need to put that in, and it really did take away from the film. Whereas this, I feel, yeah, you could have got around the fact of doing it, yeah. but putting it in really does uh, really, add to it. Like it really, it really grows, makes you. It really yeah. grows your hatred for um for the four. Um, for the four yeah. boys like and it, the thing is like the four lads are kind like kind of not really that important like Tintin you see for a little bit dead pretty quickly fun boy you see for a little bit dead pretty quickly um T-Pain uh, T-Bird T-Bird T-Pain not, not T-Pain T-Pain my man he's still going uh, <laughs> no T-Bird like and like T-Bird is probably the biggest actor of these uh, cronies David, probably David the big Kelly. probably the biggest actor in the film maybe uh, oh no. No, Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson's definitely bigger. Yeah, that's oh, fair. Uh, no, Ernie Hudson would have been bigger. Yeah, Ghostbusters, yeah. Ghostbusters was out because this is 90s and Ghostbusters, right? Ernie Hudson's definitely a bigger actor. That is. David, true. David Thomas Kelly was a fucking dickhead, though. In he's, everything. The, he's the dickhead. It's kind of similar to um, The Warriors. Y- yeah, like you have him in The Warriors as the dickhead. Like you could just, any film where you're like, we need a bit of a dickhead here, you'd lash him in and that'd be you sorted. Yeah, um, like even when you look at the longest yard, he's in that, and he yeah, he's the one who kills caretaker and that. Yeah, well, and if you haven't seen it, but it came out in like two thousand. So get yeah, over it. so get over. It. Um, yeah, like he's he's so good. Like he's probably the second biggest name. Uh, obviously Brandon Lee would have probably been quite a big name. Obviously, I think he I think he would have exploded after. I, th- I think he was going to explode onto the scene after this one, but unfortunately, he didn't. Um, but like T T Bird doesn't even last all that long. Like Skank is the one that lasts the longest. He's not a big name. Uh, top There's dollar, no, not no a big really name. Big names, bad. It's obviously the two lads, the two boys, and then um, oh, the one that was meant to be the big name. Darla, Darla, I think Darla was went on to be a big name as well, didn't she? She did, but like at the time, she's not. Yeah. She's not a it selling been, point. Like, it wasn't a big cast. No, but it's the not. Movie it's quite... was well, well, well written, and yeah, and it comes from uh, it comes from like comic books and stuff, which we've oh, yeah. seen is obviously you know easily done. Uh, but this is at a time before Marvel had become the big the big hitter that this, it is now this, you know yeah this was around the time of blade when marvel started dabbling into that a little bit but 94, even 95 something like that yeah something like that but even like blade, as as successful as blade was and as enjoyable as it is i still don't count that as a uh, you know marvel. marvel because even though it is as a marvel comic but like when i talk marvel i'm talking what okay. marvel is now like what they became like this big well, franchise yeah i'm very intrigued to see what they do with the new show but Obviously, that's a different thing. Yeah, um, I am interested in that. But like the crow for me, it's it's a very dark uh, superhero yeah. film. And like there uh, was talks that they were rebooting it there this year, but I'm I glad I'm I, I I would be up for seeing it rebooted, but I think they would really struggle to um I, some of the to outshine this one. Now. Not even that. I think they'd struggle to outshine this one. I think this one holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Um so if you are into you know, superhero films and, you know, dark all that stuff. Dark films. Like, especially even, even the likes yeah. of Dark Man. Do you remember that one with Liam Neeson? Yeah, if you're Things into stuff like that. that, this is this is one. That, like, even if you're, it's not that much of a horror, but, 
But like, no, if no, you're a horror fan, but if you're a horror fan, I think you this is a superhero film you would like if you're, you know. There are hopes to it, yeah. Yeah, like if you're one of those people that's like, I'm a horror fan and I don't like all this Disney, like all the, you know, superhero, good guy always gets his way, uh, this, that and the other. If you don't like that, this is a sort of horror film. Like this is the sort of superhero film I think you would enjoy. Yeah, I, I love this. I yeah. haven't seen it in years and when we rewatched it for this. I'd say I'd watched it, you know, I hadn't seen it in like three or four years at that point. Oh no, but, it was longer than that. It was 10, yeah. 15 years. See, like I, I for ages I was watching this at least once e- like once or twice a year. Ages I used to always have it on. Uh, yeah. and then it's just kind of so many films came out that it kind of just fell to the side. Yeah. But it's now it's it's back in the rotation now, a hundred percent. Absolutely fucking brilliant it is. Yeah. Um, and as I said, as we said, it's a shame that it ended the way it did. Yeah, a very yeah. big shame, but sure. But it is what it is. Yeah. So we move on. Um we'll go from dark action kind of thing to 80s, 70s, 80s, racism America. <laughs> oh, it's a tough watch as well. It's enjoy not as tough as um oh, this is this is quality. This is remember the Titans. Yeah, not as tough as the hurricane, but like the social aspect of like that still exists today. Like let's not sugarcoat that. It still does exist, but maybe not as prevalent as it was. It, it, yeah. as it's depicted here which is definitely the way it was back in and the for, 70s and, and 80s disney, and for disney to dabble in and do this was a big one yeah it's a it's quality quality and film stars, i'm not a big stars, american football guy but yeah it's very good star, stars the main man denzel again yeah you're a big and denzel a, fan and an, and an old favorite of mine and will Patton. you like will Patton, do you greg no no, I never would have guessed, man. Yeah. Wouldn't have guessed, you wouldn't have guessed that from Recast, anyway. No, you wouldn't guess that one at all. Um, yeah, no. Then, I, obviously, it, was, it wasn't even just them. Ryan Gosling was in it. Um, oh, yeah, big Ryan cast. Horst is in it. Um, Eden Serpley, who obviously went on to do My Name is Earl and other things. Yeah. Um, Chris, Turk. Or Chris Turk from... I know, I, know, I, I know his name's not actually Chris Turk, um, but like, that's all he Donald, is to me. Donald Faison. Yeah, he's Chris Turk to me. Like, yeah. If you told me your Turk's in that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I know who that and then, is. And then... Um, the girl, uh, Hayden Panettiere. That's the one, yeah. She's gone on to be something. Mm, not, else, not but. a name at the time, but a big name now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy. Like this, this movie was fucking phenomenal. Like I seen this, I was lying on the, the south in my mom's house, and I was absolutely hanging. And they came on the telly, and me and were sitting there, and I seen Disney sign. I was like, then I seen Denzel, and I was like, okay. Then I seen Will Patton come up, and I was like, I'm in. I'm all in. <laughs> um, were you were you an American football fan by this point? Yeah. You were, yeah. I've been, okay. I've been an American football fan since about 12. Yeah. Um, it, used see, to, it used to be on Channel 4. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm not really big into American football. I only ever... I, I've watched the odd Super Bowl here and there. Um, yeah, with the bets you used to do with Alan. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more just that... As interesting as American football is to me, there's just too many breaks. Yeah. Um, and I, I get what people say of, you know, the breaks are needed because... They have to do the tactics and stuff, and I would love to watch that, but be able to hear the tactics, like sit oh, no, in. You and... can. So, like, if you have, say, NFL Game Pass. Yeah, but I have to. Actually, yeah, I'd, have so... to buy, I'd have to be. You'd have to be fairly into the NFL to have bought that already. That's only twenty quid. Yeah, but you know, like, you'd have to already, like. Well, you for subscribe me, subscribe to everything else. Yeah, I do. I do. I subscribe to a whole lot of things that I, <laughs> you know, I haven't used New Japan. I use once a year and have a subscription for the entire year. Um, but oh, it's it's just one of those things that I'm like. That's probably the more interesting aspect to me because watching the plays, it's the play is so broken up. It's you know it's similar to rugby in that it's a big hard hitting game, but it's so slow moving yeah. that I find it hard to sit down I can, and watch. I can, I can fully understand why it didn't really take off over here. Yeah, um, considering the way we have football and things like basketball is fast moving as well. Yeah, that took off over here, but yeah, like for me, I don't even know how I fell into liking it. Oh yeah, it's something you just fell into, but like. You were an American football fan watching this. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. And even I found it a, an enjoyable watch. It's long as well, but again, it's very enjoyable. This one moves a lot quicker than the likes of the Hurricane, though. Oh, yeah. It, I, you know, it's... Although there's aspects of, you know... Racism. Racism and, you know, how horrible life was back then. The compa- yeah, like, the companionship right. between a lot of the players, you know, yeah. and the friendships that they, like, bind into makes it move that bit quicker. When they're at college camp... Uh, yeah, like when they get taken to, away, yeah. yeah, out to Gettysburg. Yeah, at that, um, that them few moments you're just like, oh. Yeah, but like the film moves a lot quicker then because of that. Yeah, and then obviously you get Will Patton's infamous speech from it. Yeah, when he's talking to the referee. <laughs> yeah, no, very, very, uh, very solid pick. 
this I watch this at least three or four times a year. Mm, I definitely yeah, haven't watched now, it that much. Now that, but, and now that it's on Disney, I watch it quite a bit more. Like I'll yeah. just throw it on and have it on in the background. Yeah, it's just one. It's one. It's just one of your you know comfort films, as they say. Yeah. You know, like yeah, don't know what to watch. Fire yeah. that on, it'll do. Um, yeah, I move into I have. <laughs> yeah, I move into a um into the horror cast here. Although some people would maybe not consider this a horror now I because will, of, I will gladly tell you those people are incorrect. I, I think they're wrong, but I do see the, you know, if people were to say it's a creature feature, not a horror, I wouldn't be able to argue too much against well, that. I mean, That's just a sub subgenre to me, though. Technically, creature features fall into the horror category. Yeah, for me, they do. Um, but obviously, it, I, I've been very vocal about it before. Jaws, for me, is the Jaws top is, top yeah. horror for me. Um, for me, I'll always say Jaws is almost the most near-perfect movie you'll ever get. Yeah, and you know, obviously, it changed on the fly because the anim uh, animatronic shark wasn't working, which just improved two, the film two, overall. Two of the three that they had didn't work. Yeah, but and like this Bruce, improved now, the film. Bruce fucked it up for them big time, but yeah, but this improved the film massively. Um, but you I know, think that shows that shows a lot of Steve, Steven Spielberg's genius to continue and on and not, yeah, and and made it work. That okay, the shark's not working. We'll have him in it for. Seven minutes, twelve minutes. Yeah, oh, it's it's a very, it's a very small amount of time. Like, and you, you see him, you know, I when I talk about this film, I was like, oh, you don't see the shark for ages. Technically, you do. You see the shark quite early, in the sense that you know he kills the open, girl on the beach right scenes. at the. Yeah. Well, actually, you don't see the shark there, though. No, but you, you know, see you see her go under. You see her kind of go under, and you kind of see the fin and stuff. So like, you 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 know it's a shark from the off, you know. Yeah. But. And then you see it again a little bit later where it's a shark and it's swimming around. Like, you know it's a shark, but you oh, don't yeah. actually get to see the full shark until, you know, like they're you, out on the boat. Yeah, you know, like the scene there where you see just a shadow underneath the water. I wonder, though, did they actually use a real shark for that and shoot it from the sky or whatever? They could. It'd be hard to judge because you'd have to go out and you'd only get one chance at each take, do you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be hard to judge. Like maybe that is what they did, and they just, you know, they went to somewhere where there is quite a lot of sharks. But sharks don't tend to be that high up on the the water. Like they some, do tend to. Some do. Like, uh, great whites will stay high uh, in terms of in and around the ocean. Yeah, for for periods of time, but then they yeah. do, they dive back deep. Oh, yeah, so it's yeah. not like you have hours on end to be doing it. You know. Yeah. Um, it's it's but, quality though. Yeah, the the film itself is brilliant, and like the. The show of, you know, like, it, this is an old town and it thrives off its summer beach business and the mayor is just like, we have to stay open. Just say that it's not it a shark. Generally kind of reminds you of Bray, really, doesn't it? The, it the small, in a sense, the, the, yeah. The business booms at, at summertime. Yeah, but ours didn't, like, Bray never obviously relied solely on the beach. Like, no, 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 but you'll see a lot more people than... Yeah, you'll see a lot more people, but it's not, the beach isn't the attraction. Like, if you're thinking of, like, say, British Bay, you know, yeah. the attraction is the beach, you know, the fact yeah. that there's a beach there. Now, there's not a whole lot, like, British Bay isn't a town where Nothing people go, to the, like, <laughs> they just go to the beach. So, like, it doesn't work in that sense. But this is a seaside resort where, like, all the shops kind of tip away during the during the year, you know, like, the locals yeah. are buying food and this, that, and the other. And then this big wave at summer comes in of, like, three months of people there all the time. And that's where they make all of their money. Um, and that's they're they're in risk of losing that, so they they're all like, yeah, yeah, just say it's not a shark, say it's not a shark, and they all take that risk. That mayor's a slimy bastard, do not he? It's not just him though, like because all the townsfolk are pressuring that as well. Even, that's what even they the want. doctor, even when you think the doctor's in on it, he signs off at the girl being killed by a boat. Yeah, oh yeah, they're all in on it because they're like this is like this is how our town survives. And I'd I say, can, like I'd say, if you, you delve get, into that, they probably have parts in the shops as well. Oh yeah, you know, and like that's. You know, like you can that's understand that, that that that's the small town mentality of it. You know, we'll just get past this. Sure, the shark will go eventually. It won't be here forever. Um, but then, like, it, it obviously is the shark. And then, Quint's speech on the the boat. You know, where he like the USS Indianapolis. Yeah, where he does that, and then obviously I've I've given my theory on um on the scar. You know, when they're showing scars, and your man has the one that's on his uh, on his stomach, but he doesn't show them. But he says yeah. he's from New York, and they're, you know, 
uh, one of them mentions a tiger shark and he's like, yeah, that's because he puts his hand, the second the tiger shark's mentioned, he puts his hand there. So my theory has still, it, like has always been that his scar is from a tiger shark and that's why he's terrified of the water. Well, he but, knew he knew that the tiger shark wasn't the right shark. Remember when they bring it up on the... On yes. The, on the... But they, they never delve into why he's terrified of water and they never confirm if, you know, the scar he has is shark related or not. There's never actually any confirmation on that. But that's then always that been one, the theory. Yeah, but then you see the one on his leg, he's like a treasure shark. Um, yeah, but that's always been... All, my theory has always been that it was, you know, a tiger shark that got him in the... Yeah. That gave him that uh, the scar he had. But, to be fair, like, if, if you're going to use any shark, apart from using the bull shark, the tiger shark's the one that you'd... Yeah, it was because they tend to attack people more. Yeah, but the Quince Quince monologue here is just so so good. And then Robert, Robert Shaw was phenomenal. Yeah. In this. and then obviously the death scenes where you know Quince rolls down the boat. Yeah, and just I you mean, know, like chomp chomp have, chomp. He could have literally got away with that. <laughs> yeah, but like the whole thing is that this all happens because Quint would have killed the shark if they just did what they said. But. Yeah. You know, the researcher just wanted to get his research done. Yeah, he wanted the proof. Yeah, he wanted to prove that this could happen. And if they just done as Quint said, this, this none of this would have been an issue. Yeah, I love, I love even the speech now when they're talking about the shark cage. He's like, go in the water, sharks in the water. No, nope. cage yeah. goes in the water. You get in the cage, sharks in the water. Nope. <laughs> no, I, I just you know the fact that the you know obviously Quint is the only one that dies, and then they have to swim back to <laughs> swim yeah. themselves back to land and you're just like well there was one great white out there I really hope there's not another like uh, the fact that this, the book is based off a true story really like there's a mix between people being killed in in just off New York or whatever yeah and then obviously the bull shark that swam up river in New Jersey and killed like seven or eight people they made mm. a story out of that like but it, it's mad because this this all led to like this massive fear of sharks and like people who were genuinely terrified to get into the ocean and stuff like that. And in truth, sharks will kind of leave you alone. Most of them. In th like most of like most sharks will leave you alone. Like and most shark attacks on humans are down to them, you know, seeing something floating on the top of the water and assuming it's a seal and attacking. Unless, unless it's a bull shark who comes in on shallow water and bites things because they're arseholes. Yeah, but like in general, you know, the like, oh, yeah, in general, it's it's yeah. it's not a thing, and it, it took years for that to be you know accepted as fact because for like, so long people were just terrified of sharks. He got he got an awful trouble for this movie because yeah. he released it right at the start of the summer. Terrified people going to beaches and stuff, yeah. But I mean, I mean, I, I mean, if you release that in the winter, people are gonna forget about it by the summer. You might yeah. as well make it a hype. Yeah, you might as well make your money off it. You know, and sure, why not? As, as we said, his genius showed through this movie. Like, yeah, it did. But um, and like yeah. even the cast and uh, Richard Dreyfus, yeah, uh, there's, Robert Shaw. there's only three real people in it, you know. Like everyone else is kind of not really all that important. Like you could kind of do the film without the them. one. The one bad thing that they done in this was the little kid who gets killed. His ma is about eighty. Yeah, <laughs> she's a bit too old now to yeah. be uh, she's, that. She's about eighty. <laughs> yeah, she she's more of uh, the grandmother, I would think. But sure, we'll, we'll let that slide for the rest of how good the rest of the film is. So we're down to number one for me. Yeah. It's got to be the old John Carpenter classic, doesn't it? It Big does. I, China. Yeah. I, again, this is one that was sort of on my list, but I was like, there's no point to me even pretending because I know it's going to be on yours. Yeah. It's um, one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. Left itself open for a sequel, which obviously never happened, Glad unfortunately. We Glad we never did. I don't know. I think if, if a sequel had come out, Back like, when it was... had it done it maybe then yeah no, no I, don't, I don't mean now but like back when it was first made he obviously left it open for a sequel because obviously we see the um at the end the the hairy hand on the the, the truck. truck um and i, I was like, just me hanging around yeah but like you know <laughs> i think you made that joke when we, when we recorded this episode as well yeah. <laughs> um but like it left itself open for a sequel where it was like if i feel that there's a good story to be told i can tell another one but he obviously decided against it and probably for the best because this is an this is a comedy action, sci-fi. Yeah, like sci-fi comedy action, like a bit most, of horror in it as well. We we said that in the show. This this movie probably touches all bases. Yeah, um, um this one again this, also has one of your best, uh, you know, evil henchmen in it. Yeah, similar to uh, Thomas Patrick Kelly, like you know, 
Ah, oh, he's he's just so good. Yeah, you um, could have had him in here. <laughs> no, you couldn't. I think you could stick him uh, in. He'd have worked. Well, you've got the henchman. It's he's, he's in everything, isn't he? Um, yeah. The, who's he also passed away there not so long ago? I don't. Know, I think it was back in the twenty twenty. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, um, but uh, he's like, he's just in everything at that time, wasn't he? He was the evil the uh, evil yeah. henchman. He was in James Bond. He was in everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, he was in a lot of martial arts movies as well. So he's obviously. Oh yeah, he knows his stuff, but like, um, um, but like this, this, this movie was one that Carpenter brought out, and I don't think he told a whole lot of people what it was about. Could have gone either way, really. Yeah, all oh, this could have been like I can imagine. I can understand why a lot of people hate this movie. Yeah, I loved it now. To be honest, yeah. when I watched it, I I've loved it since I ever watched it. It's always been so I, funny and action packed, and yeah. just everything about it, like uh, egg I mean, egg Shan and everything else. So. I mean, this is this is Carpenter doing what he done for the thing. Yeah, like didn't tell it. Like the thing was produced as a, a survival movie, and that was it. Like, yeah, just build. It that's it. That's all you're didn't, getting. Didn't tell anyone it was an alien. Or, I'd say yeah. the ads probably showed a bit, but yeah. Um, the likes of this then came out, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, uh, I remember and... getting this off my uncle Pat on video, and it came in a green box, and it had um, obviously the front cover is the yeah. same as the DVD. With um, everything on it, and then you have Kurt Russell at the top with his famous T-shirt. Or oh, this, um, not a T-shirt, the vest. It, it, Kurt Russell's a bit of a weird one, right? Because if you like Kurt Russell, you know you really know the name Kurt Russell. Yeah. Do you know? But then when you think of other action stars, Mel Gibson, things like, around that time, yeah. Everyone kind of knows who Mel Gibson is, but not everyone would know who Kurt Russell is in a sense. Do you know what I mean? You turn around. Can you name five Mel Gibson movies? You can't. Can you name? Five Kurt Russell movies, it's a lot harder. Yeah, but like Kurt Russell as the, you know, the action hero, but like either, he's I mean, never a good guy and he's never a bad guy. Like he is the good guy in the film, but you know, he's not, he's not a goody two shoes yeah. either, you know, like he's, yeah. he's a real dickhead at times. <laughs> I mean, Carpenter used him three times for a reason, like four times for a reason. Oh yeah, like well, I, actually, probably more than four times, is it? The thing, this, uh, escape from New York, escape from LA. There's definitely another one. Uh, what am I not thinking of? It probably is. There's definitely, there's definitely, that there's I definitely think a couple. Of off the top of my head, there's definitely other ones. Um, that I, I like just that, that was another one that could have got an honorable mention to be in here. Um, escape from New York, yeah, great, great film. Yeah, uh, yeah. escape from <laughs> the other one. <laughs> That's the less said yeah. about that, the better. But, but escape yeah. from New York, yeah, big trouble. Um, like it has Kim Cattrall in it as well. Yeah, ah, um, just. The cast is brilliant for this, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like the story's just so fucking mental. But that's the thing; it's it's I. It's brought the, a lot of Chinese it's folklore. It's brought a lot of Chinese folklore into American life. Yeah, I can only imagine you know being handed the script like this is the film we're gonna do, and you're reading through it and you're like, so I'm a trucker, okay, and I fall I fall in love with some girl, okay, that that's cool. Uh, the only fall- thing is, I'd say that happens far too quick. Yeah, but it's like, uh, see, he's not in love with her. She's kind of in love with him. He's kind of just infatuated with her. And then he's yeah. just like, he, yeah, but I'm still, you know, time to hit the road. Life. Time to hit the road, babes. I'm gone. And, and she's love, like, no, no. She's like, no, no, stay. And he's like, nah. no. <laughs> I love, Which, I love you know, the... sticks to his character, you know, which is something that tends not to happen now. Normally, you know, yeah, the, the, he, the hero changes and he's no longer the, you know, the trucker who's, you know, all he cares about is himself and getting to the next town. No, he stays that way. Like, he's still, I'm off, babes. <laughs> I, love, I love it when he's on the radio and he's like, um, when the rain's belting down and there's a guy banging on your door or standing beside you giving out and he's like, yeah, you owe you some juice. Yeah, checks in the mail. Yeah, uh, it's just, and like, you're reading through the script and you're like, yeah, he falls in love with her, saves her. And you're like, wait, hang on. Go back a page there. How so did she get captured? <laughs> hang on. So there's, there's this ancient old man who, you know, has been, like, he can't die. David and he Bohan. needs he needs her so that he can become young again and then remain around forever, but in a young man's body. But he has magic powers and all of his friends have magic powers and I'm just a trucker and I'm going to win. Uh, yes. Uh, and you've got good reflexes. Your, your, main, your main thing is that you can catch a knife and throw it really quickly and you always hit the, the target. That, that's how you win. I say, okay. Like, imagine <laughs> reading that script, you'd, you'd be like, this is batshit, but I love it. Um, and I'm so glad that they they went with this. Obviously, it, it is um, not a comic book, but there is a book. There's three books based to this. 
Yeah, uh, which was know. obviously where they were going to go, yeah. but um, they they obviously just stopped here. It obviously um, didn't do well. I, it didn't do well and I think it, it's kind of one of those cult ones you know you either love it or you hate it yeah, yeah. Um, or well, I suppose some people would be kind of like yeah it was fine but they wouldn't they wouldn't be like I'd go see a second one do you know what I mean whereas about I now, would have when, been when you say people love it like you've got arguably the biggest action star in the world that wants to remake it because it's his favourite film in, in The Rock yeah to be honest I'd be okay to see it be remade Um. I just but, don't see him doing it. He wants to obviously play Jack Burton if, if all he, is to be believed. Yeah, see, the thing is, he's too big to be Jack Burton. Do you know, like yeah, Jack Burton... I wouldn't believe he's a trucker. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, Kurt Russell was a small guy. You know, he was, like, a big enough guy. But he his thing isn't, you know, I'm super strong and I can lift really heavy things. His thing is literally, yeah, I'm a trucker and I can throw knives really well. It's all uh, reflexes. Yeah, like, that. that's about it. Like, everything else is a bit... Hmm, yeah, there's no way I should be winning against what's essentially Raiden from Mortal Kombat well, no, here. Well, that's where Mortal Kombat came from. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so like Raiden, essentially Raiden, Raiden from, uh, one of the most Raiden powerful. Raiden. Yeah, one of the most powerful people in Mortal Kombat is just some throwaway character in this. Like, yeah. you know, it's insane. But yeah, it's I knew it was going to be the top, like either the top or second top for yeah, it was, for it was you here. It's it, definitely yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, mine is super obvious to anyone that knows me. Yeah. Wearing the, t- wearing the t-shirt and everything. No, it's like Debbie Does Dallas. You're the only one who thinks Debbie Does Dallas is the best film of all time. Space Jam is the best film of all time. And since we, co- since we covered it, because the new Space Jam came out, which, oh, if, people, haven't which if people <laughs> haven't seen, there was mixed reviews on it, which I was expecting, because I think a lot of people thought it was going to be a complete throwback to the old one. I knew that's not where they would go. I knew they'd go a little bit different. I will always think the original is better. But I think if you sat kids down on what gave them this Space Jam, uh, I think they would love it. Mainly American kids, because I think LeBron James didn't transcend the way that Jordan did. Um, He changed the game. Very few have. The likes of Tiger Woods did. uh, Jordan did. That doesn't really happen that much anymore. It's amazing Um, when you look at it now in terms of us... Like say from early nineties, the amount of people that have changed sport, and I think changed it, their retrospective sport. Like Tiger I, Woods changed the face of golf. There's no denying that. Yeah, I Michael see. Jordan I think the I think the nineties allowed for, for it because there was just somebody came along that was so charismatic and so actually good at their sport that it allowed them to do that. Yeah. Nowadays, there's just too many people that are too good. Yeah, that it, you know, there's a, an argument as to oh, who's the best. Like there was no argument back then. Jordan was the best. Woods was the best. There was no discussion to be had. Yeah. Like but whereas Wood, now, Woods, in my opinion, is probably the best ever. Jordan, in my opinion, is probably the best ever. No, I don't watch basketball. Yeah, but like do you know, know what I mean? Like there was no disputing that. Like now, the yeah, before he obviously uh, Kobe Bryant passed away, but there was always the argument about Kobe or LeBron, and then even now, there's still LeBron and. X player and sometimes it's a flavor of the month or whatever but there's always that argument that was not a is thing there, with Jordan is there more games now though as well that these records are being broken quicker like Jordan set a record and Kobe's what two or three years younger than Jordan was when he broke it yeah but you also change the game so you change how the game is played and people yeah. get to learn off you like Pele did this so that it, and Maradona did this so that the likes of Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo can go and do something different but if Messi and Maradona and or like if these players don't exist then these younger players have to think up these things for themselves like the Cruyff turn something that loads of players do now yeah it wasn't called the Cruyff turn before that because nobody was doing it yeah well people might have been doing it but not with that you know the, the odd person might have done it but not as a you know a mainstay for them you know like yeah and it's worse because a, you see people doing that and no one could stop them Yeah, exactly. So it became his thing, you know, and because he perfected it, other players, when you're younger, you're watching and you're like, I'm going to learn to do that. And you learn to do it like the Rabona people have learned to do that because they've watched players do it. with the amount of people doing that now. Yeah, but like, it, it, you know, it's now a a well-recognized thing, whereas like the fake, the the fake shot, but you pass it off that Thierry Henry used to do. Yeah. You see that, you don't see too many people doing that, but when we were kids and Thierry Henry did that, Everyone was doing it, you know. It's crazy. Um, um, and it's just one of those things. So, like Jordan transcended, um, yeah. and then he obviously went off. He made this film, 
lots of speculation as to about why he wasn't playing basketball at the time and why he actually did retire and it was gambling debts and his dad had just died and there's all this speculation as man wanted to do like he didn't have to keep playing just for people's thing he wanted to stop he can stop no is he the 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 thought is that he was suspended for gambling oh there's there's... probably wouldn't have been illegal then unless you're backing your own team to lose no it it was other things like he was gambling and he was in very heavy debt so he's a big big gambler Um, yeah you can see that i've heard that from so yeah so there was stuff like was it a suspension, but the NBA never wanted to say it, so they told him to say he was retiring. And that's like there's there's suspicions about that's what happened. Wasn't like his dad was killed and stuff, and it was to do with his gambling debt. He was a baseball player then, didn't he? Yeah, but the thought was that, that there's theories out there that he only did that because they were like, just make up an excuse so that you can step away for the two years we've banned you and then come back. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't really care because it has nothing to do with the film. But the film, like, it's just you know, you've got Michael, you've got Michael Jordan. Uh, you take the Looney Tunes, which at which at the time are oh, fucking huge. They were they were the at this stage the cartoon. Were, yeah, they were the Sesame Street. Yeah, they were the Sesame Street of that generation, and like the, I suppose the Peppa Pig of this generation sort of thing, but a little bit more than that because kids kind of outgrow Peppa Pig by a certain age. Whereas the Looney Tunes, they you kind of zany. you kind of stuck with them for quite a while. Yeah, but I think I was watching them when they were on RTE and then they went into obviously Animaniacs and things. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it was one of the things that, you know, my parents, like my dad would have been happy to sit down and watch with me. Oh, Oh, the Looney Tunes will sit down and watch because there's all these little wink nudges that a kid doesn't get, but, you know, you get and they're like, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, But even like, because it's so wacky and zany, like it's something that it's not, you know, stupid kids comedy either. Like it's something that you can sit down and be like, yeah, it is enjoyable enough. I think this may have been Finn's first sort of real film that wasn't a cartoon that he actually sat down and, and watched and rewatched and rewatched. Now, yeah. I know it turns into a cartoon. But... Yeah, like it's mainly cartoony, but you know, like you've got like Jordan playing basketball with the like Looney the Looney Tunes, you know, perfect selling point because if you're into sports, you're like, oh, well, I can sit down and watch it for that aspect. Oh, I want to sit down and watch something with the kids. There you go. There's loads of sport. And even when it's not sport, it's, you know, joke, 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 joke. There's nothing too serious in it. No. So it, it keeps the kids' interest bright. It's colorful. It's everything. Um, yeah, and then Danny DeVito. Um, you've got Danny DeVito playing your bad guy, which, yeah. you know. He couldn't have been anybody else at that stage. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got they, for the people who are into basketball, you've got the likes of your Larry Birds, your, Char- your Charles Patrick Barrett, Ewing. Patrick Ewings, uh, Muggsy, like all of these players, like these were all big players at the time, big names. Um, obviously, Ewing and Barkley are the, the two bigger names at the time. Uh, Larry Bird had kind of retired at that point, but he was yeah, still a playing, big he's name. Playing golf. <laughs> he's playing golf, but like then you've got Bill Murray just hanging around. Like, uh, who let Dan Aykroyd in this movie? I didn't know Dan Aykroyd was in this flick. Uh, uh, Mr. Murray, how, how, how did you get here? Oh, I know the Teamsters working on the film. Uh, ah, so that's how it works. Like, I love the fourth that. Like, wall all over the place. They break the fourth wall, but they like, there's no reference to, oh, we broke the fourth wall. It's just like, ah, that's how it works. Uh, it's just, it's so good. Like, uh, to me, this is the film that I've watched the most in my entire life, easily. Like, easily. Uh, it's definitely the film I watched the most this year because Finn watched it about four hundred times at the start of the year. Yeah, no, when genuinely, Netflix, when Netflix it, brought it out. <laughs> in my life, this is the film I've watched the most times. Like I have this on. I still have the VHS of it. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not rewound because it was obviously just left after the last time I watched it, and I didn't rewind it because I was a child and clearly didn't rewind it. Have it on DVD. Have it on. It's on Netflix. Obviously, no, it's not. well, it was for yeah. quite a while. Have it on a uh, Blu-ray. Sure, why not? Just get it on Blu-ray. The 4K has come out this year. I have the 4K already, Greg. It's sitting there. Okay, what is it? Yeah, have that. Like all of it, just uh, fucking put it all. Have the the jersey oh, so yeah, and everything. Uh, yeah, I have everything. You know, like it's just did this for me is the film that I fell in love with as a kid. You still have the top that we brought you back from America. I do. Yeah, it's one of the one of the Space Jam tops I own. The purple uh, one, wasn't it? No, it's not purple. It is, it's got like kind of, it's got them all on the front and then like a few of their bits and pieces. Yeah, there's like, like I've like three or four of them. Then I have a hoodie for Space Jam. I have a, 
the top, obviously, that I've worn before when we when we did the show. The one yeah. you're wearing now. Yeah, this one, but like the actual, you know, the basketball top with uh, oh, yeah, the, the Tune Squad, squad and everything on it. Yeah, yeah, I've got all of it. Um, it for me as a kid, this and Mighty Ducks, which was something that was close to making it for me on this list. These were two I was of the. Surprised they didn't. Um, yeah, it was hard to knock off some of the others. Like even like, there's a lot of honorable mentions there. Like the Jurassic Parks should have probably been in here somewhere. Very hard. Dodgeball, like there's too many. Uh, like yeah. Good- Goodwill Hunting, like just, just too many. Yeah. Um, like we we only, we only went five. We could have sat here for another two hours. Ah, we could have just gone through the whole lot of them. Dogma, Shaun of the Dead, Happy like Gilmore. Fif- I think there's 50, e- fifty episodes. Yeah, I just, it's just, there's so many of them. Um, but obviously. This was always going to be the top one for me. Anyone that knows me knows that this was going to be on my list of the best films because I've made the arguments before of why this is the best film because it's, you know, it's cartoons, it's family friendly. As a we, parent, we, you'll sit down and enjoy it. Everything, like there's just we all, nothing. We all remember the episode of Sherlock Real. <laughs> yeah, there's just, there's nothing that beats this. Um, It's it's like my argument as to why 7-Up is the greatest drink of all time because if anybody, if someone comes out to you and they're like, here, do you want to, do you want a Coke? But you'll be like, oh yeah. Oh, but it's flat. No, it's all right. Someone comes out to you and goes, you want a 7-Up? And you're like, yeah. Oh, but it's flat. Yeah, that's all right. I'll, I'll drink a flat 7-Up. That's fine. No, I, 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 I may not be sick, but I'll drink it. Everyone will drink it, you know? And then people say, uh, what about a beer? N- nobody nobody wants a flat beer, lads. 7-Up is the greatest drink of all time, right? That's that's why that's the greatest drink of all time. And the reason I to argue with the logic. Yeah, and the reason Space Jam is the greatest film of all time is that it's you know, family friendly, you know, everyone can watch it. Everyone will enjoy it as they watch it. And, you know, look at the stars it's got in it. it it's Bill Murray as Bill Murray. How can you not love it? I mean, Bill Murray is, plays Bill Murray in one other movie that I can think of. Yeah. And well, uh, very, uh, very Murray Christmas as well. Oh, he's Bill, Bill Murray in that. He's Bill Murray in that as well. But yeah, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's classic, classic stuff. Um, but it, it's great to look back on some of the episodes we've done throughout the year. We might, um, we, might, we might try and do this if we're still around next year with the movies that we do, obviously. Yeah, well, <laughs> Space Jam will be still top of my list unless we say that I'm not allowed well, no, to use it. No, because we but... can't use it now because this is this year's list. Ah, yes. Okay, I get you. But uh, I might just cover it again next year just so I can put it in again. <laughs> this was the year that Space Jam 2 was released. This is the day Space Jam 2 was released, so we're going to cover Space Jam 1 again. Yes, uh, yes, very good. Um, um, but no, yeah, it's been a great year. Um, obviously, I, I had you come in, in. I come in through it. <laughs> you came on for your first episode as The Hurricane. and it was four or five, maybe six, I missed, and then I came in. I think, I, think it was pro- I think it was probably two or three episodes later, you were in as just the mainstay co-host, which was great to get you on board, obviously. I generally, I generally sent you from, that text message as uh, I, I was locked, lying in bed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm all over it because obviously we, we were great friends before, um, yeah. and just it gives us a chance to sit down for yeah. whatever it's it is, especially Come, with the tough times that's it's obviously going through. Yeah. And it's it's let us sit down, and you know, we always rewatch the film just before it comes up, so it gives us a chance to go back and rewatch something, or if one of us haven't seen it, it's yeah. the chance to see something new. Yeah, um, I think so, there's only been one movie that I haven't seen on that list. I, I actually no, there's been no movies that I haven't seen on this list. I think Hurricane was probably one of the few I hadn't seen. Yeah. Um, Goodwill Hunting was the one I'd seen the least. Her, yeah, Goodwill Hunting is very good, but it's tough to sit down and yeah. watch it a load of times in a row. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been a great year, and obviously, as we said, we're moving off to our to our own YouTube now. channel, and uh, hopefully, we can continue on with another great year and. See what films we have in store for the next year. But until then, yeah, until then, it's been it's been a great year and good luck.